Hello everyone, I'm Sean Katus. Welcome to The Compassionate Competitor. Each episode will explore the mental, physical, and emotional toll, as well as the rewards that come along with high-performance athletics. From success to shortcomings to transitioning away from the game, we will get an inside look at the whole picture when performing at the peak in the world of sports. High-performance athletics comes with so much more than just a singular mind to perform. Here, we look to see the whole human. Jules, thanks for uh, being here, bro. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Good to see you, bro. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am honored and excited to welcome a native Chicagoan, graduate, and legendary quarterback from CVS High School on the south side of Chicago, and one of the best quarterbacks in the country coming out of high school. He is a graduate of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where he had a great college football career, even leading his team to the Rose Bowl in 2008. He is now a father and CEO of Audible Wealth Management, Isaiah Juice Williams. Welcome to the Compassionate Competitor, Juice. Man, so excited to be here. Good to see you, Sean. Yes, sir. Great to have you, man. So I want to dive right into it. Um, if you could just speak to the upbringing, where Juice started in the athletics and life. Tell me a little bit about your background, where you come from. Yeah, man. So originally south side of Chicago, I mean, it's now Bronzeville, but it wasn't Bronzeville when I was growing right, up. They, just, right. they gentrified that area and, and, and named it something much cooler. But uh, I mean, for, for the people who understand Chicago, the low end, yep. just the, you know, the gutter, the not so friendly parts of Chicago, I, I'm absolutely from that. Yeah. But uh, I mean, even I mean, even taking it back before that. I mean, you talk about the name Juice. I, mean, I actually had Juice before Isaiah. Okay. So Juice was just a nickname, but it wasn't football given. It was a name at birth, actually, by my grandmother in the living room. So, for the parents out there, I mean, I was 13 pounds, eight ounces at birth. Ooh. So I was a juicy baby. Okay. So I had Juice before Isaiah in the delivery room. So that's all. It's kind of like my fun fact. I was about that's to ask you. I never knew that because I was about to ask you. <laughs> Damn, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people try to. Uh, I, I, look, I've, I've, I've had some coaches along the way that try to tra take credit for giving wow. me the name Juice. Oh, he had a strong arm. No. <laughs> Not at all. Like that name was given to me before Isaiah. So, yeah. so uh, my grandmother did that. But uh, yeah, born and raised uh, South Side of Chicago, man. Just like the the things we see, you know, growing up in late eighties, nineties, early two thousands, like all of those things. The the uh, the treacherous, the not so friendly parts mm -hmm. of the city. Um, you figure out a way to persevere that, and if you're lucky, I mean, you get afforded a few opportunities to make those, you know, those lows of life into something beautiful. So right. I was just lucky to be one of the right. one of the fortunate ones to to, to show the, the, the positive sides of Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Coming from that background early on, were, what was your outlook, your mindset? Were there high hopes for your future prior to or, or leading up into your uh, time playing sports and in your as you got big and, and started to blow up What was yeah. your outlook early on in terms of just your hopes for your future? What did that look like? Yeah, but I wish I had a sophisticated story where I'm like look I got a plan for my life and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. It was quite simple My dad was around enough and my dad is 6'4", 290 at the time. Okay. I was scared of dude. I mean, <laughs> I'm 10 years old. I don't want to deal with that walking home. Right. And he had basically three rules, right? You, you go to school, you go to church, and you don't lie to me. Mm -hmm. And anything else, we can negotiate. So at that time, I knew I mean, street violence, gang violence was absolutely present in Chicago. Right. And typically, if you join, get into the street violence, like you, school starts to lack, and I didn't want that problem. So I did everything I could just to stay busy so I didn't fall into those, you know, the street traps, um, having to, you know, pledge my loyalty to a gang or anything right. like that, and I would have to deal with him. Yeah. So my, my outlook was just to stay busy, uh, stay distracted from the realities of life, the poverty struck and stuff, the yeah. financial literacy, illiteracy at the time. Yeah. Um, like all the stuff, like, you know, the, the poverty, all the things that come along with being on South Side of Chicago at that yeah. time. And it was just that simple, stay busy, stay active, and just do something you enjoy to do. And for a long time, it was basketball, just like any other kid well, in Chicago. Chicago. You hoop. Yeah, yeah, you hoop in Chicago. Uh -huh. But you might know this too, like, you know, growing up in Chicago, you have some levels of frustration for whatever reason, right? 
and if I can hit somebody as hard as I can and don't get in trouble, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah. So football introduced itself and started to rise above basketball just because of that simple concept. And uh, around oh, wow. midway through my high school uh, career, football started to take over and it kind of led me to, to Champaign. Yeah, right on. I was going to ask you, so at what point, you, ca- you went to CVS, at what point did it really start to take off? What year, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, did you come in starting? And at what point did, did football just really become apparent that this is going to be what's taking you to the next step? Yeah. So, I mean, I walked into a situation at CVS where CVS's uh, legacy as a football program, I mean, it exceeded the reality because yeah. at the time, CVS was good. <laughs> now, you know, in the 90s, you had stories, you had some really good guys. Yeah. Uh, but it just wasn't that. But they was hanging on to that sort of, you know, that level of dominance. Right. So I walk in and their thing was, we just need a quarterback. We just need a quarterback. And I was highly rated coming out of Chicago, whatever that meant, coming out of eighth grade, right. whatever that really mean. Okay. So I started on varsity right away, okay. like as a freshman. As a freshman. As a freshman. There's 18 year old dudes with beards and I don't, I, mean, I don't know all this. I mean, I'm just out there just trying to play. Dang. And uh, right away, man, I'm out there and I did okay. Like, I held my own, no injuries, anything like that. Shook out the fear. And by the end of the season, I started to make a few plays. But nothing crazy, but just like we survived, made right. it to the playoffs and all that. The next year was where it kind of like started. Where just like, I'm just not surviving anymore. I'm actually making more plays than not. Yeah. And, but I'm still young. I'm a sophomore. I'm right. a varsity. I'm ahead of my time. And then we started running to like Lane Tech, Dunbar. We see Hubbard in a, in a jamboree, stuff like yeah. that. I was like, oh, it, it gets a little real. It gets a little real at <laughs> the top level. It's, it's, yeah. it's definitely levels. It's levels. <laughs> but, yeah, so you get – I got exposed to that early. Uh, and, again, I, I'm literally playing with grown men who bodies are a little bit more full than, yeah. than I am as a 14-, 15-year-old kid. Yeah. But by the time I'm turned as a junior, my body started to catch up with the mentality and the experience. But that's where it shifted. And it's no longer a fear of getting hit. It's no longer a fear if I can do this. It's just like now everybody going everybody who lined up in front of me, right? Y'all gonna experience what oh. y'all what y'all think y'all ready yeah. for? It? Y'all gonna see. And that was just my mentality. And like I said, it's no different than any other kid in Chicago. Yeah. It's just you just have a chip on your shoulder. Right. I had an outlet, lucky for me. And around my junior year, that's when it started to become real. I hit up a few college camps, University of Wisconsin to be exact. And Is that your first one? That was the first camp I went to. Okay. So I went, I went um, f- at the end of my freshman year, going into my sophomore year. It's the first time I ever went to any camp. The first time I've been away from home for three days in a row. So three day right. camp. I've never been outside the house for that long. Damn. And I went there, barely survived. I got homesick in two days, which is wild. It's in Madison's an hour and a half away. But it was an experience. But the next year, going into my junior year, it all changed. So just like, I, I, I'm supposed to be here and I got something cooking. So. Right. That's where it really, really started. Yeah, and it started to take off. So at what point, what's the highest you were ranked? I remember you being ranked in the state, nationally. Um, did the Division One offers start rolling in junior year for you? When did that start for you? Yeah, so the end of my junior year, and it's crazy, um, I, my, one of my best friends in life, Chris James, who's the head coach of Morgan Park right now, we were like teenage rivals, yeah. basketball. I played for AAU's uh, AAU team called Hoop Squad. He played for an AAU basketball team called Old Gold. And we would play each other all the time. I'm like, yo, I'm tired of chasing this dude around because he got all this energy. <laughs> then elementary school-wise, he goes to BZ. I, goes, I go to uh, Donahue. We are rivals there, too. So it's just kind of like this mutual respect that we always have for each other. Fast forward three years later, we disconnect football takes over and I keep hearing about this receiver at Morgan Park, this receiving quarterback at Morgan Park. No right. clue who they are. And um I get invited to this banquet. So Edgy Tim, Orange Blue News dot com, affiliate of rivals dot com. I get invited to this top prospect and I had no clue I was one I was even considered for that. And I walk in, I'm like, yo, that's you? At the receiver I keep hearing about? So we reconnected and um he was already getting recruited, him and Double D at Morgan Park, and it was like, look, there's this camp that's going on in a couple of weeks, you should go. They're just taking highlight tapes, taking photos, you should go. I think you're one of the best players. I keep hearing about you, you should do it. It was right around January going into my junior year, that's what, like going into my senior year, that's where everything kind of took off. Yeah. And I got my first offer from Illinois. Illinois. 
And from there, when the dust settled, bro, I might have had like 82 offers, some crazy. It happened fast. It happened Man. real fast. And, so you, um, you're able to go anywhere. Pretty like much. Most, most pretty places. Much. Yeah, pretty much. And I don't think, I, I don't think Chicago football saw anything like that, at least not in recent years, right? Uh, of course, you see basketball. We right. legends to come through on the basketball side. Right. But football, we hadn't seen anything like that. Yeah. And I, I had no case study or example of what this is supposed to look like or how to navigate that. So it was just right. like a whirlwind of just stuff just happening. And yeah. I mean, I just kind of t- humbly, I just kind of kept pressing forward and just, you know, Illinois was just kind of like the school that was always my back pocket because they were first. On the next edition of Chicago Noir, three incredible leaders, three powerful conversations. Tiffany Hamill Johnson, Maya T. Hamilton, and Dr. Dominica McBride are the leading ladies, leading from the heart. Join the conversation on Can TV Cable Channel 19 or stream live on CanTV.org or on the Can TV Plus app. Elevated conversation and storytelling. Experience the power of community television. So getting into the, getting in the U, U of I, you're coming in freshman year. Uh, what's your mindset? You're coming off being one of the biggest, best quarterbacks, nationally touted quarterbacks in the nation as an 18-year-old, right, coming into, into college. What is your mindset? What's the goal? Where is your vision set on for you at that point? Because of high school, i kind of been there before where I'm – Early on, I'm a freshman, starting on varsity. Right. Probably shouldn't be, be there. So it was just a hyped up version of what I already went through in high school. So I was familiar with it, but you magnify that times 20 when you throw media on top right. of it. It's the Big Ten, yeah. you got national news, you got Chicago media market. Some business to it's it now. A lot of business, business correlated to that. You got fans that's there, they got expectations. Like I remember signing, uh, when I, once I signed in February, whenever it was, by April, or May the following, a few months later, season tickets were sold out because that recruiting class was one of the top classes that Illinois has seen in years. I remember that. So it's like the season tickets sold out. So, I mean, you told not to really pay attention to look at that, but you don't have it. I mean, right there. I mean, you, you, see that. you, can't, you can't help yourself. You right. peak because you're interested. Right. And um, I, re- but I remember, like, look, it's just like high school. Go out there, survive, learn the game, and just keep getting better. Yeah. Keep getting better. And that was just the mindset. Like, I had really good players around me, Pierre Thomas, Rashad Mendehall, Alan Ball at the time. And it was like, let me lean on them until mm-hmm. I'm ready to kind of take take over as the leader of the team. And I just kind of survived until that time came. Yeah, right on. So going from, at what point did you start seeing playing time? You came in with the mindset. At what point did that, your process and your progress pay off to where you started stepping on the field? And eventually became QB1 yeah. at some point. Well, yeah. Take me through that. So it was it was game four of my freshman year. And I, it was always like kind of like a baked in um, strategy of or game plan. Whereas from, game, from day one, it was whatever happens, the fourth series you go in, no matter what. We okay. up, down, even. Series four, you go in. And I knew it was coming, and you get enough of that, and I'm prepared for it. Now, right. it's, you know, it's a back, backup quarterbacks is all is the best position in football. <laughs> like, it's no pressure. You get to learn. You get to watch the starter, right. the starter go out there and make mistakes, and you come in and correct it. So I did that for three straight games, and I had some success. And we was getting we was getting crushed by Syracuse. We shouldn't have been losing to Syracuse my freshman year. And I come in, I give a spark, and we almost come back and win. The following year, I get the nod to start going into game four, and we play against Iowa. And it ain't go so well. <laughs> My first start ain't go so well. But that was the introduction to, like, yo, this is your team now. Yeah. And you might be 18 years old wow. with no facial hair. Wow. But you're responsible for leaving this entire college football program, and it kind of started from that. Man, I, I think people can appreciate, as uh, some people can, but just how – how big that is so young just kind of out of the blue you're starting it's it's a lot on your shoulders at this point did you feel the pressure did it feel any pressure to you at that was there any fear in fear of failure or fear of success or you know what was that mindset once you 
that was put on your shoulders and you knew that you were now the guy. Yeah, it was definitely a fear of failure. And in the age, at that time, social media wasn't that prevalent. Right. Facebook and MySpace was around, yeah. right? So it wasn't as big as it is now. Yeah. But in the era where it sh I shouldn't have put that level of pressure on myself, I did because I really cared about being successful. Right. I cared about winning and I cared about being something different. Because I've always been a little bit different, just kind of course correcting or doing something completely out of norm the entire um, time prior to that, what is elementary football, high school. And I wanted to, to continue the same thing at Illinois. We hadn't seen any level of success like that since the, like the early 90s or something, right. like something crazy. And I wanted to be the one who led the charge. And I added all this extra pressure on myself, but not really thinking like, are you 18, 19 years old? You're not supposed to do that. Now have goals and expectations, but don't put the extra pressure on, myself, on yourself. Yeah. That piece of it, I couldn't really navigate that. And, um, and again, I mean, I'm so close to home, I would come home for Thanksgiving or Christmas, whatever it is, everywhere I go, it's like, yo, I saw the game, right. uh, y'all this close, y'all right there, right and there. So from it's the added pressure. Too. Right there. And it's like, you know, high, like my, my family's coming to games, like college, you know, classmates and all that coming to games. So it was a lot. It was yeah. unneeded pressure, but yeah. it was definitely self-inflicted. It, it's definitely tough not to, I mean, even if you didn't put it on yourself, the pressure's going to be there, man. Like you said, media, all of that stuff. You get to the your, your sophomore year. You've been starting. You come in QB1, end up making it to the Rose Bowl. Uh, take me through that journey, and then I want to go into Rose Bowl next year, just kind of how that, um, what that evolved into yeah. for you. So this is the thing. I mean, and Sean, you know this, right? The, the things you don't see with collegiate sports. When you come from a dynamic where there's so many guardrails on what you can and can't do as a young man, as a, as a young athlete mm -hmm. in Chicago, what is danger, what is like being, you know, supervised, whatever it is, you know, um, education curriculum. When you go to college, you got a lot of freedom. Yeah. And for me, I, look, I wanted to enjoy that. Like, <laughs> I ain't got no curfew. I can go to the cafeteria whatever right. time I want to, whatever it is. So. I indulged in just being a social kid because I was right. like that in high school and forget the, the football pressure. I'm still a human being. I want to meet, you know, fellow classmates. I want to get to know, you know, the, the kids from right. from from London yeah, or China. Student. Like, I want to know y'all. So right. my time to do that was in the evening. And uh, my freshman year, I indulged in quite a bit of that because, and not in an irresponsible way, Dang. but I, was I absolutely focused? Probably not. Yeah. But the following year, going into my sophomore year, um, September 3rd, 2007, I had my oldest daughter. And Lachey, she's now 16, wow. about to be 17, going to college, which is crazy to me. But that slows you way down. You become a young father at the age of 19. Right. And that forced me not only to slow down, but it's just like I'm in a rocking chair yep. <laughs> in the middle of the night. I turn film on or I yep. start looking over my football notes. And indirectly, I just started to sharpen up and I started to take the game a little bit more serious. And mm -hmm. around that time, that's when it kind of flipped. And it's like, this might be an opportunity to change your entire family's life. Wow. If you take this a little bit serious, you love to do it anyway, but just like really master it yeah. and truly dominate it. Well. That's where it started. And yeah. that current year, I mean, we won a couple of games we probably weren't supposed to. Yeah. Beat, you know, we beat the number one team in the country that year. We go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, man, that's amazing, man, with those with those kids to do do to you, man. <laughs> and it's impressive at a young at a young and like myself, I had a daughter at nineteen, played ball, but um not everyone for most people it probably buckles us down, but not everyone. So salute to you for for yeah. dangling that the way the way that you did, man. <laughs> for uh, sure, for sure. So going from quarterback and leading your team to a Rose Bowl, a rough couple years just competing, finishing your career at U of I. Take me through that transition and, and transitioning out of the game, what that did, where, where your mindset was at. Those last few years that really defined a new chapter in your life. Yeah, man. So uh, those, those, those were a few tough years. And um, I mean, the people who, 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 who've had the opportunity to talk about this with me, they'll tell you like those were probably the two or three toughest years that, that, that soon followed my, my college time. Yeah. So you go from, you know, you being a Rose Bowl quarterback and you being one of the, you know, one of the top players in the country and you got all this energy, all this yeah. attention, you up for awards, it's high school, Juice Williams, all that, right? 
I remember. Because, uh, I, I, I mean, to that point, I remember going to, like, Fridays, and I introduced myself as Isaiah. I was like, Yo, you play ball? And I say, Juice. <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you yeah. So it was like that, right? But so you go from that level of success to having everything kind of, like, crash down right before your eyes, like, instantly. Man, that's tough. Yeah. Because for me, like most kids, the dream of getting to, getting to the pros, you know, playing 20 years, making a ton of money, being retired by 36, 37 years old, I created that for myself, right. and uh, it don't always work that way, as we know, right? The, no. the chances of it happening is so slim, but I created the expectation because of this juice factor that mm-hmm. I had in college, and I was right there to, to, to walk into that world, but it didn't quite happen that way. And um, the few years after college, man, was so devastating because I had no identity, I had no direction, and I'm coming from having the the, the the previous four or five years mapped out. I knew what time I needed to wake up. I knew I, I knew I had to be. I had a schedule. I had everything kind of mapped out. To you're an adult now. Figure it out, and you don't know what that is yeah. if you, all you know is football. Yeah. And that was a tough time. And I had two kids at that point. In, at that point in life, yeah. man, it was a um, man. It was devastating, and you know. It's, it's it's one of them times where it's just like, yo, why like why am I even still here? Like, yep. what's the point? Because I didn't say the family like I thought I would yep. economically. I wasn't the brand that I had been for the yep. most recent years. What did my kids look up to? I felt like a failure. Yep. And it's dark. It's dark. But you, you, you put yourself around good people. You start to go seek out professional help. Right. You know, you go through the therapeutic process or whatever yep. that might be, whether it's, you know, having a cow session or right. you having a big brother. Yeah. that you can talk this stuff through and you figure out what's next for yourself. And, you know, much like an athlete at the time, I'm a freshman or in high school or in college, you start to figure it out. And yeah. slowly but surely, I started to kind of snap out of it over time. Yeah. What do you think in that healing process, um, in, in rediscovering this new Isaiah Williams, Isaiah Juice Williams, you know, this new person that you're now having to become and identify with for yourself, what were the things that, started how long did it take what enabled you to start waking up and coming out of it and embracing like getting into the healing like all right let's move forward Mm -hmm. and feeling good about yourself to 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 move forward like what what time was that what how long did that take yeah it took roughly two years and i remember i graduated college 2010 so fall of 2010 i couldn't watch nfl football fall of 2011 I couldn't watch NFL yeah. football because part of me is still like I'm supposed to be there. Yeah. And um, right around, you know, fall, uh, winter 2011, summer 2012, I started to like accept the reality of like, all right, yeah. that's just not your life. That's yeah. just not your story. You meant to do something else. Now yeah. it's up to you to go figure out what that is. Yes, sir. But it's time to move on. Yeah. And it's just a realization. The same thing that I was, you know, kind of had this, you know, this pity party about. It was the same thing that started to wake me up. Like, football, to me, is the greatest analogy to real life. Yeah. You have a plan, and this is why I call my company Audible. You have a plan to to do this thing. We got to score. Right. And I have a set few plays of this is what the defense is going to do. This is my plan of approach. We should score in roughly six or seven plays if we right. set this up right. Well, what you don't plan for is your running backs or, or your star receiver, or you get hurt the first snap. What do you do? Well, you better call an audible and you better figure it out. So for me, it started that process of like, all right, the NFL didn't work out. What's what's now? Do you give up, you tap out, or you go go figure out a way to score? And you try stuff, you do different things, you lean into the network, you lean on your education a little bit, and you start to see a little sunlight. And you just keep going and keep going and you see what happens. Man, salute to you for, for coming out of that and finding that way, man, and, and to all the people who supported you, because I know those those people are, are very uh, pivotal in our, in our healing. Three questions real quick. What has the game given you? Oh, man, work ethic, network, um, perspective, um, and ability to see things where they are today, but also project what might come later. Yes, sir. What has the game taken away? My body, uh, <laughs> health. My, my, my health, right? Uh, you definitely to shave off some some Sweet. some some perks that you have, yeah. you six pack ass, all that. Um, losing the game, you kind of lose the body a little bit. But 
um, you, you lose a little bit of the gladiator approach, right? Yeah. I'm in corporate America right now, and I'm competitive, and that'll always be there, but I can't be the gladiator style yeah. of competition, right? right? So it's still, you, you take away that piece of it. Right. All right, last one real quick. Uh, if you can go back and change anything, what would it be? I mean, honestly, the one, the, the, if it is one thing I would change, like, you know, and, and it's not the fact that I didn't work as hard or it was opportunities lost within the game itself. I think I would have taken taken a little bit a little bit better of advantage of the education and the the network at University of Illinois. Right. Yes, sir. Right now, it's one of the largest alumni bases in the U.S. It's something like 450,000 living alums worldwide. Yeah. And I'm there. I, I had graduated in like three years. And my senior year, I had like basketball one on one, some crazy. Yeah. Whereas I should have, you know, took a step back, looked into what I wanted to do potentially next, finance, which I'm in now. Right. Took a master's, so started on my master's or something like that. Right. Yeah. And I really leaned into the alumni network a little bit more. But that's it. It's yeah. not the fact that I didn't yeah. do this, this, and that to get to the NFL. No, no, I hit no. up. Because I, I think, up. I really believe that I'm doing exactly what I supposed to be doing. Yes, sir. And God don't make no mistakes. Yes, so, sir. I mean, do it all over. I would have the same Rose Bowl yeah. fun experiences. I would go through them two dark years, yeah. and I would snap out of it the yeah. same way. Yes, sir, man. With Juice, man. Thank you for coming man. on, bro. I appreciate you. Man, pleasure to be here, bro. Good to see you, Honor man. Honored to have you, man. Likewise. Honored to have you. Juice Williams, thank you so much for joining me in conversation and community. We'll be right back with my post analysis. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Bianca Cotton. Join me Mondays at 7 p.m. for Behind the Confidence Smile as I sit in conversation with incredible, dynamic, and complex Chicagoans who peel back the layers, living lessons, the joy, and the pain behind their confident smiles. You can watch on CanTV19, CanTV.org, and CanTV Plus app. Nina Simone, what did we learn today? Today we learned that Juice was a top quarterback in the nation in high school. He was starting quarterback in the Rose Bowl. He's taken all the knowledge and lessons learned from the game of football and created a lane for himself to help people and families secure a brighter financial future for themselves. Witnessing his journey has been inspiring and me and my father have so much respect for him. Good job, man. Thank you Chicago for joining the conversation tonight. Until next time, live your dreams like they actually matter because they really do. Good night.